As a fan of a Pac-12 team not named USC or UCLA, should I buy what our commissioner is selling? The commissioner out there, for those unfamiliar, is George Klaivkov. And he was most recently on vacation when the news broke that USC and UCLA were going to the Big Ten. So George Klaivkov, he repeated about 38 different late kick talking points. Naturally, I approved of a lot of what he had to say the other day because I'm pretty sure he just watched the show on the plane and jotted a bunch of notes down on his hand. So he said some things that on surface I agree with. Uh, he also took some shots at the Big 12, and there's a reason behind that. It's not just petty sniping back and forth. And this is kind of the crux of my takeaway. George Klaivkov talked about the, the Pac-12 and how we're still a very, very solid entity. You know, we're going to be a sustainable product moving forward. None of our teams, none of our programs are going to leave for the Big 12. You need to repeat that from the mountaintops. Now, the follow-up is you need it to be true. You need that to actually be prophetic and pan out. But here's what he knows that he kind of hinted at that I need you to understand. He talked about everything being in a holding pattern right now, waiting for the announcement of the Big Ten media rights deal. A lot of you get, get so turned off by this that you don't even pay attention to it. And I don't blame you. A lot of this stuff is for industry nerds. But I happen to be fascinated by this part of it. So I'm going to give you a little peek behind the curtain and do with it what you will. But I'm telling you, the situation for at least one of these conferences, either the Big 12 or the Pac-12, is not quite as financially dire as it seems. George Klaivkoff knows this, and here's why he knows it. Right now, the Big Ten, uh, presumably before the season starts, is going to announce their new media rights deal. It was about to be announced weeks ago, and then the news broke about the two California schools. So uh, they had to take some more bids, and ultimately... There are going to be one or maybe a couple of entities, maybe it's CBS, maybe it's one of the major streaming services that are going to end up winning their Big Ten media rights bid. So they will, they will get packages of games and whatnot. But here's the follow-up. Here's where it concerns the Big 12 and the Pac-12. There are going to be some other big players at the table who are told, you lose. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to look in front of them They've just got this, this huge mountain of cash that they've allocated to spend on Big Ten football and basketball, mainly football, and they were told, your money is no good here, but your money's still here. And so what are they going to do with it? Well, they can do one of two things. Either they can just say, well, there goes the SEC, there goes the Big Ten, they're locked up forever, the ACC is not coming online anytime soon, I guess we're just not going to have college football on our airwaves uh, spoiler alert, that's not the route they're going to go. Or they could go Route B, and they could say, all right, what else we got? There's the Pac-12. Now, the Pac-12 is not going to be nearly as attractive a product as the SEC. The Pac-12 will not be nearly as attractive a product as the Big Ten. But they will be a product. And someone, in fact, multiple someones out there, are going to have a ton of money and a ton of shelf space that they need to fill. You're not in as bad a position if you're the Pac-12 or the Big 12. I think it's kind of a one or the other scenario right now. They're not in nearly as dire a position as it seems. You just look at them right now and you see, dude, those aren't any teams I feel like watching. But that's not the way that either a broadcast network or a streaming service looks at them. They look at them, being the Pac-12, they look at their shelves, which are empty. They're totally barren of college football programming right now. And then they look at their competitors and they understand we're charging people $9.99, $12.99. We're charging people a, a total, um, well, for cable bundles, uh, $100, $200, whatever you pay. We've got to justify it. These people need live sports programming. Someone's going to overpay for the Pac-12. George Klaikos knows this. I have a trouble saying his last name. But here's the key. You've got to keep your conference together. Big 12's thinking the same thing. We've got to keep our conference together. And that's why you keep seeing these headlines back and forth, like the Big 12's talking to Utah and the Arizona schools. Now, if you're a Georgia Bulldog fan, you look at that and it doesn't even move your needle. You don't care. Nor should you, really. Because you look at that and you don't think it's valuable. You think whether Arizona is in the Pac-12 or the Big 12 is irrelevant to me. That's true. But if you are the Big 12 or the Pac-12, Whichever one of you is able to just keep it between the lines, keep it on the road, 
long enough to get your product to market, you could end up having someone overpay for you. And especially, and this is the great unknown to me, and it's the great unknown for a lot of folks in the industry. The great unknown is, is there going to be a conference out there that's willing to go total streaming? Is there a conference out there that if Apple TV stepped up and, and any of the streaming giants know they have to massively overpay because they have to overcome the stigma that you need to be on traditional broadcast television. You, got it, you can't leave broadcast TV. The streaming giants want your content. They know that's the baked in philosophy for good reason. And therefore they know they got to massively overspend. Will anyone ever take them up on it? Because if you're in desperation mode and you need to fill your financial coffers like the Pac-12 does, and especially being on the West Coast where they're already positioned, wouldn't the Pac-12 potentially be a prime candidate to be the first one that jumps into that pool, that tests those waters, that goes full streaming? It's not like you're giving up tons of viewership anyway. No one's watching Pac-12 football in relation to the competitors out there, in relation to the SEC and the Big Ten. If you're going to get a ton of money, well, I'm, I'm actually thinking of a metaphor in my mind, but I'm not going to use it. I'm not going to use the live golf metaphor. Why not? Take that cash and go streaming and just see how it works out. At the very least, you don't have folks hurting for money anymore. Anyway, that's the great unknown. I'm not an expert in that field. I'm just saying that's what a lot of people who are experts in our field are talking about behind the scenes right now. So let's just see how that plays out. George Klyvkoff was not an idiot when he was talking the other day. When he was being very braggadocious about how we're not going to lose anyone to the Big 12, he's not talking to you. He's talking to folks who have a pen in their hand and a checkbook in the other, and they're getting ready to probably pay someone way more than they should be paying for college football. He wants it to be him. He wants it to be them. And the cat over there in the Big 12, is, he feels the exact same way. And so if, if Big 12 media days were happening the same day, and they were both live talking to each other, they just would have gone back and forth saying the same things. So we'll see how that works out.